During treatment, I wasn't able to work. In fact, I didn't even attempt to work. I was running a small business. We were a high-end marketing servicing firm. It was a very intensive situation working with these clients. A lot of travel, and there was absolutely no way that I could begin to function at the level that I needed to function while during treatment. So I basically shut things down uh, from my perspective. Stress was a, I wanted to keep as stress-free of a life as I possibly could, incorporating the work world in there during a, a cancer treatment. I just can't even imagine what that would be like. I had a lot of faith. I, I never thought that I was going to die. I just thought about living. Uh, I thought that this was just going to be a log in the road, if you will, that I had to get around. My kids, I remember one day they, we went to Seattle Cancer Care Alliance and they had a, a counselor on staff and that was part of the services that they provided. And my kids came along and they went and saw him in a separate room. And I remember on the ride home, I asked him, I said, so are you planning on keeping up going and seeing these, uh, the counselor? And they both, in unison like they had rehearsed it, said, no, Dad, we don't need to. And I was a little taken back by that. And I said, why is that? And they said, because you're going to be fine. And they were right. During treatment, it was difficult because the one thing that I, I protected my kids from seeing me sick. I didn't want them to see me sick. So, and I remember even being in the hospital when I had surgery, I didn't have them come visit me while I was in the hospital that week. I really wanted them to think of their dad as getting, you know, just going through a certain treatment that he had to endure and he had to go through. But I didn't want them to see me in an infirmic way, if you will. And I think that helped. It helped me and I think it helped them. Because I was deemed inoperable during my treatment, and, but I had the subsequent chemotherapy and radiation, the surgeon, performing surgeon, told me that I maybe had a year or two to live at the most. Well, that resonated, and I sold my business, and I took my kids out of school, either together or separately, and we traveled. I took them places that we had never been together. And I had a belief that I really wanted to leave my kids an inheritance of memories as opposed to one with money. I thought that would be more important for them. And that's what I really focused on. One thing about cancer, it brings the shortness of life to bear and forefront, right smack dab in front of your face every day. So I live every day. I get up in the morning. I think today is going to be one of the best days of my life. And I forge ahead thinking that. My priorities completely flipped. I should say my values completely flipped. I used to be, my, my core values were about building wealth and having adventures and, and love was a little bit further down the line. I completely inverted those when I was diagnosed. When I heard those words, you have cancer, my value system completely flipped in a moment. And that hasn't changed.